The purpose of this uh, video is to help my students better understand how they can simplify fractions greater than 1. Now these examples are primarily for my 6B and 6C groups. My 6A group is actually uh, beyond this, uh, but if they wish to watch the video and review a little bit, that's great. But this video is primarily for my 6B and 6C group. Now let's go on to a couple definitions. <clears throat> Our first one has the question, what is a mixed number? Now a mixed number has a whole number part and a fraction part. For instance, let's say that we have uh, 3 and 1 eighth. That is a mixed number. We have our whole number part, this 3, and then we have our fraction part, the 1 eighth. I could do a million of these, 7 and 1 half. That is a mixed number. Once again, we have a whole number part, 7, and then we have a half, our fraction part. Let's say that we um, have another example. Let's say that uh, uh, say we, were, we were very hungry and we ate two whole candy bars and then we had one-fourth of another candy bar. Now what that would look like is, you know, we could say this is a candy bar, this is a candy bar, and then our fourth of a candy bar would be something that looks a little bit like that perhaps. <clears throat> if we want to express this as a fraction sentence, we could say, you know, 1 plus 1 plus 1 fourth. Now, I could also have said a different form of 1 because 4 is our denominator. We always want to have like denominators when we add fractions. Then I'm going to give this a denominator of 4. And since the denominator is 4, my numerator must also be 4 to equal 1, so 4 fourths. 4 fourths plus 4 fourths plus 1 fourth is equal to 2 and 1 fourths because we have a hole here, another hole. Now, please ignore this little messiness. And then our fourth. So we have two holes and 1 fourth of another one. So that's what a mixed number is. A mixed number is simply a number where you have a whole number part and a fraction part. In this mixed number we have 3 as our whole number and 1 eighth as our fraction part. In this example of a mixed number we have 7 as our whole number and 1 half as our fraction part. In this example of a mixed number we have 2 as our whole number and 1 fourth as our fraction part. So a mixed number is simply a uh, fraction where you have a whole number part and a fraction part. Okay, let me clear my board. Let's go on to the next one. <clears throat> what are improper fractions? Now an improper fraction is a fraction whose numerator is greater than the denominator. Now let's talk about that for just a second. Our numerator in this case A, will be greater than our denominator, in this case B, to give us an improper fraction. So as long as our numerator is greater than our denominator, we have an improper fraction. For instance, 4 thirds is an example of an improper fraction. Um, 9 halves could be an example of an improper fraction. Mm, 17 over 8 be an example of an improper fraction. Uh, anytime you have a numerator, in this case 4, greater than your denominator, in this case 3, you have an improper fraction. Now all this really tells us is that we actually have enough parts. In this case we actually have enough thirds that we have enough for at least one whole. You know, think of it almost like a, a division problem. Anytime you see a fraction bar that designates an operation of division. And if I have four thirds, that's simply the same as, as, as saying I have four one thirds. And if I want to find out what my uh, number would be, uh, four divided by three, it, it would look something like this. I'll do it this way. Um, 
4 divided by 3. 3 will go into 4 one whole time. Then 1 times 3 is 3. 4 take away 3 is 1. That remainder here is going to be our numerator. So here I have 1 whole time, and then I have 1 left over, and then I have 3 as my denominator. So if I have 4 thirds, I actually have enough for a whole and one third left over. If I have nine halves, well, nine divided by two, that would be four and one half, because I would have nine, I'm sorry, two times four is eight, nine take away eight is one, which would be our remainder, and we have one half. So nine halves is equivalent to four holes with a half left over. With 17 over 8, I can convert this improper fraction to a mixed number. I can think uh, 8 will go into 17 two times, two whole times. You know, you can look at it this way. 1, 2, one, two 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I can actually count out. Uh, two groups of eight. See here we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have a group of eight here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have a group of eight here. So I have two whole groups of eight, and then I have one left over, and my denominator is going to be eight. So with the improper fraction 17 over eight, I have enough for two holes and then one eighth left over. Okay, so those are some examples of improper fractions and how we can convert those into uh, mixed numbers. Once again, mixed numbers, they have a whole number part and a fraction part. All right, let's clear the board. And let's go ahead and look at uh, some examples of work that uh, should be familiar to my students. Now here we have a chart, and in this chart we have a column for mixed numbers, one for fraction sentences, one for improper fractions. Now this is four thirds, but my program wouldn't allow me to write it down the way we're used to, to seeing it with a four here in our fraction bar and a four. It for some reason wanted to to just do four and a slash and four, but it means it means the same, four fourths. So let me clear the board just a little bit and we'll get started. Now, if I have four fourths plus four fourths plus one fourth, I know that this is equivalent to one. When my numerator is the same as my denominator, it's equivalent to one. So I have a whole, a whole, and then I have a fourth left over. So one plus one is two, and one fourth. So I can write my mixed number here, two and one fourth. Now I can come up with my improper fraction in two ways. I can simply add my numerators together, like four plus four is eight, plus one is nine, and then just write my denominator down and get nine fourths. Or I could say four times two is eight, plus one is nine, and then nine fourths is there I go. There I go. <clears throat> All right, let's look at sixteen fifths. You know, a lot of times my students are used to seeing like the numerator fraction bar and fifths. It's it's the same thing. So if I have sixteen fifths, I know that uh, five will go into sixteen three whole times. Three times five is fifteen. 16 take away 15 will leave me with a remainder of 1, so that would be my numerator, and then my denominator remains as 5. Just to double check my work for anybody who wants to understand where I got my uh, whole number in my numerator, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll work it out for you this way. 5 will go into 16 three times. 3 times 5 is 15. 16 take away 15 is 1. So. 5 will go into 16 three whole times. That would be my whole in the mixed number. And 1 is my remainder, so that would be my numerator. 1 fifth would be my fraction part. Okay, let me clear my board just a little bit. Now let's talk about fraction sentences. 
If I have three wholes, I'm going to have to have three, three fractions where my numerator and denominator are the same. And anytime we add fractions, we always want to have like denominators. So if 5 is my denominator here, then my whole parts are going to have to have 5 as a denominator. And to make a whole, they must also have 5 as a numerator. So I have to have three sets of 5 fifths. So 5 fifths plus 5 fifths plus 5 fifths plus 1 fifth. That's going to give me my three wholes and my 1 fifth. Now here I have 3 and 3 fourths. <coughs> Excuse me. Now with 3 and 3 fourths, I'm going to do this one just like I did uh, up here. Just like I did up here. I'm going to have to have three holes where I have a like denominator. Here I have 3 fourths, so I'm going to have to have uh, a fractions where 4 is the denominator. And in order for it to be equal a whole, I'm going to have to have 4 as a numerator. So I'm going to need three of these fractions. So 4 fourths plus 4 fourths plus 4 fourths plus 3 fourths. Now that is equivalent to 3 and 3 fourths. Now here I can just add my numerators like I did up here or I can do that little multiplication thing where I say 4 times 3 is 12 and 12 plus 3 is 15 and have 15 over 4. I can do it that way or I can add my numerators together. So 4 plus 4 is 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 3 is 15, and then my denominator stays the same, stays 4. Okay, uh, I want to keep this video under 15 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and stop there, but uh, here are some other examples if you want to uh, experiment and play around like I did up here and fill these out for yourself. Now might be a good time to pause the video and, and work on them. Uh, I can tell just by looking at this one, I have one, two, three, four. Uh, I'm sorry, one, two, three. I have three, seven, seven, so that's three holes. And then I have four sevens left over. Uh, I know that's going to be seven times three is 21, plus four would be 25 over 7, or I could just go 7 plus 7 plus 7 is 21, plus 4 is 25, and 7 be my denominator. Uh, back up to here, I know that 9 will go into 30 uh, 3 times. 9 times 3 is 27, 30 take away 27 is going to be 3, and then just bring my 9 down. Now, I could reduce this down to 3 and 1 third, but to stay consistent with this denominator being 9, I'm just going to leave it like this. So I know I need three holes. I'm going to have to have 9 ninths, three of those. So 9 ninths plus 9 ninths plus 9 ninths plus 3 ninths. And just to double check my math, 9 plus 9 plus 9 is 27. And 27 plus 3 is 30. And 9 is, there you go. Um, this one, I know 6 will go into 29 uh, 4 times, and then uh, 6 times 4 is 24, 29 take away 24 is 5, 5 sixths. Here, because I need my 6 to be a denominator to have 6 sixths, 4 of those, then I'd have 5 sixths. Here with 6 and a half, I'm going to have uh, 2 halves, 6 of those, 6 two halves plus one half here and then here well two plus six is twelve plus one is thirteen over two thirteen halves so I just wanted to uh, uh, save a little bit of time so I went through those very quickly alright let's go on to uh, this part here I just wanted to do one more example because some of my students are going to have to be uh, working on uh, are going to have to work on changing uh, improper fractions to um, mixed numbers. Let's look at uh, 25 over 6. I would divide 25 by 6, and I can do that mentally. 6 going to 25 four times. 4 times 6 is 24. 25 take away 24 is 1, and bring my 6 down. This video is about to conclude, and I hope that 
It helps students understand fractions greater than one. Thank you for watching.